This program is sponsored by the Bridgeview Medical Plaza, 7124 West 83rd Street, Bridgeview, 708-233-0707. Dr. Rashid Abu Shanab, chiropractor in the Bridgeview area since 1998. Bridgeview Medical Plaza, offering chiropractic services, acupuncture, massage therapy, weight loss, vitamins, herbs, decompression treatment, and blood testing. Now, adding medical services with Dr. Usama Zarab, dentistry with Dr. Salah Akhras and Dr. Rabah Salama, pharmacy services with Dr. Miriam Abdul Razak. For lower back pain, neck and arm pain, injuries secondary to auto and work, high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, or any medical condition, please stop by for a free consultation. Consult Dr. Rashid Abu Shanab in the Bridgeview Medical Plaza at 7124 West 83rd Street in Bridgeview, 708-233-0707 or www.drshanab.com. Yahala Voice is welcoming Dr. Rashid Abu Shanab and his team for his weekly show. And now please welcome Dr. Rashid Abu Shanab. Yeah, Hello with Dr. Rashid Abu Shanab is a weekly show hosted by uh, Yolia Rouhani and uh, myself, Dr. Rashid Abu Shanab. We uh, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, this program is uh, sponsored by the Bridgeview Medical Plaza. Dr. Rashid Abu Shanab, chiropractor in the Bridgeview area since 1998. Bridgeview Medical Plaza offering chiropractic services, acupuncture, massage therapy, weight loss, vitamins, herbs, decompression treatment, and physical therapy. Bridgeview Medical Plaza also offering dentistry with uh, Dr. Saleh al Akhras and Dr. Rabah Salama. Pharmacy services with Dr. Maryam Abdul Razak. And now, just joined the plaza, is Dr. Uh, Osama Zorob, a medical provider for all patients with um, high blood pressure, urgent care, arthritis, diabetes, heart conditions, lung and respiratory conditions. Zorob Medical Center, located at uh, 7124 West 83rd Street, Suite C, in the uh, Bridgeview Plaza off of Harlem and 83rd, 708-599-9250 inside the Bridgeview Medical Plaza. And uh, with us in the studio today, uh, a landmark in the medical field as a whole, and uh, specific to the Arab community in the Chicago area, Dr. Uh, Osama Zarab, uh, a licensed Illinois and Indiana medical physician. Hello, Dr. Osama, and uh, welcome to our weekly show. Thank you, Dr. Rashid Abushana, for this uh, great introduction. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Osama Zarab, I just want to introduce yourself uh, to, to, to the community. Uh, you are a licensed Illinois and Indiana medical physician uh, affiliated with the Christ Hospital. Um, board certified in internal medicine, and I know you had uh, multiple awards, mashallah, uh, top internal medicine specialist in Chicago in uh, 2012, recognized by International Association of Internists Edition in 2012 and 2013, uh, Patient Choice Award in 2010. Uh, you've been selected as one of the Illinois favorite physicians in 2010. Uh, mashallah, MVP, MVP award 2008. I thought MVP only for uh, football for players, <laughs> but smalla, mashallah, MVP award in 2008 uh, at the Advocate Christ Medical Center, Hope Children Hospital, and November 2008, Value Leader uh, for Compassion with Patients. And I know, Dr. Osama, you did some publications in. Um, in uh, 1994, I would remember, I, I read an article about that, Zorob, about the acute ethanol, uh, I'm sorry, acute ethanol inhibit calcium influx in esophageal contractility. That is correct. What is, what is this uh, uh, publication about? Yeah, that was uh, early when I was, uh, after my graduation from medical school. I did at Loyola University. Um, it was, uh, you know, I did as a GI fellow. So I did a research, um, uh, and that was to check the effect of alcohol on the uh, esophageal reflux. Okay. So we did a uh, successful uh, study on cats, esophageal uh, 
sphincter of the cats, and um, we proved that ethanol can worsen uh, the uh, what we call gastroesophageal reflux. Okay. The MBC is a uh, uh, some kind of esophageal reflux. People have like uh, heartburn or something. Exactly. Okay. The acid from the stomach can uh, get back to the esophagus and cause uh, uh, chest pain. بال عربي حرقة عرفت كيف في الصدر وحرقة في البطن فهذه طبعا الالكوهول كان ميك ات ورس ان ذا بيجينينج دكتور اسامه وي ات ياهو فويس ويلكمينج يو تو اور شو اند كونجراتيوليت يو اند يور اسوشيتس فور ذا نيو سنتر ان ذا بريدج في اريا ذيس از يور سكند لوكيشن ان ان ذا شيكاغو اريا دكتور اسامه يس انديد اي هاف Uh, another office, uh, which is uh, the first office I started, which is close to Christ Hospital. It's in Cicero and uh, 103rd Street. MashaAllah. So that's good. So inshallah, uh, both centers will be very successful. And uh, thank you very much for coming. So today uh, we are discussing uh, three topics, uh, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, and cholesterol. Uh, Dr. Sama, you know, you see many patients, very much, maybe 90% of the patients that you see uh, diagnosed with one of these or maybe all of these. So can you please uh, elaborate a little bit about uh, maybe the first topic we'll pick is, is diabetes. Like, w- what is diabetes in general? Okay. Um, before I talk about diabetes, uh, I want to say that these three conditions uh, contribute to a lot of problems in the, uh, to the health. Mm-hmm. And this is why we choose them uh, most of the time to talk about them. Right. These are these are the uh, most common problems that we see in, yeah. in the in the practice. Uh, diabetes mellitus is a condition where the body or the pancreas is unable to keep the blood sugar in the uh, the blood sugar within the normal level. So the blood sugar goes higher than the normal level, and if um, Left without treatment, it can cause uh, a lot of damage uh, to the body on the long term. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are two kinds of diabetes. Uh, Type 1 diabetes, uh, when there is destruction of uh, the cells that secrete insulin in the pancreas, we call them uh, beta cells. Mm -hmm. Um, When there is... uh, when these cells are destroyed, of course, there are different degrees of destructions, and uh, and that uh, reflects on the med- on the medical condition itself. So uh, that will cause the blood sugar to go high because there is no enough or sufficient insulin to bring down the sugar to the normal level. Ninety five percent of these cases are related to something called autoimmune. Mm-hmm. Um, which means that the body uh, make or the immunity system uh, generates antibodies against these cells in the pancreas and cause their destructions. 5% only, we call it idiopathic, means we don't know why it happens. We run all kinds of tests and we don't know. Right. So th- this, the, the, the type 1, this is the one with insulin? Uh, right. Uh, this one, we need insulin because the pancreas is damaged and you need mm-hmm. to give insulin. Uh, now, most of these cases happen in children, oh. but it, it doesn't only happen in children. It happens also. It can happen in adults. Now, why this damage happened? We said uh, 95% uh, because of circulating antibodies mm-hmm. on the immunity system. Well, we know that uh, two-thirds of the cases are environmental, and one-third only is genetic. Genetic means it's uh, in, inherited, inherited. Mm-hmm. okay? So uh, the two-thirds, which are environmental factors, uh, we don't have solid statistics to tell us what is the specific cause. We think uh, measles, mumps, rubella, some other viral infections can cause that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, really, uh, the problem is because most of the uh, effect or, or symptoms of diabetes uh, appear after a few years from the infection. We cannot tell which environmental factor causing that. Right. So that's type one. Type one. Mm-hmm. Now type two, uh, it has fifty fifty percent fifty percent environmental fifty percent genetic. In this case, it is not uh, it is not caused by destruction of the uh, beta cells that secrete insulin in the pancreas, mm-hmm. but it is because the body either 
get, because the pancreas first can uh, is secreting insulin, which is not enough to bring the sugar to the normal level. Mm -hmm. So you may not need to give uh, insulin. You just need something to make the body sensitive to your own insulin or to stimulate your pancreas to give more insulin. Mm -hmm. so uh, like and we don't need, in this case, insulin. We just rely on, uh, uh, of course, besides medications, uh, change the style of life. So you mentioned something about uh, normal level of, of sugar. So what is what is a good normal level of sugar, like fasting? I know there is too many research, and every day there is a new number. You know, some people say 100, 110, 109. But what is, you know, in your practice, what is a good normal level, fasting normal level, like when patients come in to you and say, hey, Dr. Osama Zorob, my, my blood sugar in the morning is, is 140. What do you recommend for that? That's a good question, Dr. Rashid uh, The, the, okay. Let's say normally the fasting blood sugar shouldn't be shouldn't exceed 100. 100. Okay. Now from 101 to 126 and a half, I, I know it sounds like uh, funny. Why 126 <laughs> and a half? This is what all the statistics came uh, down to. Um, it's considered the gray zone. You're not really diabetic. You're pre-diabetic. But if you do some changes in your style of life, you can go back to normal level. Mm -hmm. And if you don't and it gets worse, you can become diabetic. You become diabetic officially if your blood sugar always after uh, more than 127, let's say, okay. in the morning. Yeah. Now, uh, if somebody checks his blood sugar one time, it's not enough to diagnose diabetes. Right. Uh, and uh, after you eat, the blood sugar should not exceed uh, well normal people less than 160 less than 140 uh if it exceeds 200 that is diabetes of course in more than one uh, occasion so that's basically but you're right there are um uh, still uh, you know a lot of debates about what exactly the cutoff and all right, that right it is a little bit uh confusing now how about the hemoglobin a1c oh oh well arabi we'll call it itarakumi you know, is there any specific numbers we should look into as well since we talk about normal levels? Yeah. In this case, hemoglobin A1C, mm -hmm. uh, the blood, uh, the uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't really uh, read how much sugar in your how uh, the exact glucose amount in the blood. It reads the carriers mm -hmm. of the sugar uh, in your blood. And normally, if you look at normal person, how much how how many carriers uh, in the blood for the sugar, it's usually 4.5 to 5.5. Right. Now, uh, if you are diabetic, we would like hemoglobin A1C to be less than 7. And to be excellent, it should be less than 6.5 even. Right. Uh, we cannot diagnose, uh, we cannot use it for diagnosis mm -hmm. uh, or for um, like accurate diagnosis. We prefer to, uh, to do other methods like checking your blood sugar uh, multiple times a week, uh, before uh, fasting in the morning and after you eat your good meal, heavy meal. Right. Some people don't check their sugar uh, after they eat because they think it's inaccurate. No, it's as a matter of fact, it's, it's, it's more diagnostic to know how much after you eat is your sugar. So you don't recommend us do it after a knafa plate or a makluba or a No. <laughs> Well, if you want to <laughs> get suspicious about yourself and, and worry and confuse, yes, you can do that. Okay. Now, how, like, how should I say that? How am I, as, as an average individual, like, would know if, if I have diabetes or not? Like, uh, what the symptoms should be, like, a red flag for me to go ahead and say, Dr. Osama, you know, I maybe have diabetes. Okay. Um, we, okay, in, in, in the medical term is, polydipsia, polyphagia, polyuria. What does it mean? Uh, you feel thirsty all the time. Mm -hmm. If you start to feel thirsty all the time, if you start going to the bathroom a lot and drinking, of course, a lot of water, if you feel hungry, all right. these are signs that you should worry about, that that could be diabetes mellitus. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if it reaches that level, if you are really... Um, drinking a lot of water and going to the bathroom a lot and feeling a lot, I mean, hungry all the time, uh, there is a big possibility that you have diabetes and you better go and check yourself with your doctor. 
Gotcha. Now, we discussed the, uh, the types of diabetes. We discussed, you know, the symptoms of it. Now, uh, let's say if somebody already diabetic and decided, you know, unfortunately, we have a lot of patients like this. They decide, well, I'm not going to do much with it. It is what it is. They don't check their blood sugar. They don't do anything. What is the complications? What, what could happen? Okay. Uh, diabetes is like the mother of most of the complications uh, in the body. Uh, diabetes can affect your heart. Mm -hmm. It's one of the risk factors. Um, it can uh, cause kidney failure and put uh, people on hemodialysis. Uh, uh, of course, it's also one of the risk factors that can affect uh, the blood vessels of the brain and cause a stroke. Uh, it, can it, it can affect the, the arteries or the blood vessels of the extremities. Uh, so people start having numbness, tingling in their legs. They may right. have also decreased circulation, what we call, and um, people may not feel anything when they hit something right. in their feet, and they can develop. Uh, I'm sure, Dr. Abushanab, you see a lot of probably these cases. They come with problem in their feet, and sometimes even uh, it prompts amputation of their toes. Yeah, some people come in, unfortunately, with, with bruises, and you ask, well, what did this bruise come from? They say, I don't remember. Like, and maybe this is because exactly. they, they are unable to feel that. Exactly. So what's a good prevention for diabetes besides not eating knaf? I'm not against <sighs> knaf, guys. Don't get me wrong. But it's, it's, uh, it's just easy to say, and everybody knows it. You know, I love knaf, by the way. I, I, I eat it all the time. <laughs> but nothing personal against anybody. Me too. But I <laughs> exercise, and I make yeah. sure I burn it. So uh, how to prevent it? Okay. Well, first of all, if you are, you know, if it's caused... If, if it's type 1 diabetes, sometimes you can do nothing about it. This is the insulin, the type 1 this is, is the, the insulin uh, yes. dependent. Okay. Insulin dependent diabetes, that's type 1. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because your the pancreas is already uh, destroyed, okay? So you need exogenous insulin, or mm -hmm. another word, insulin that's not from your body. Um, but still, of course, if you, if you change your style of life and exercise, etc., you at least will be able to maintain it with a normal level and avoid the complications. Right. Now, if it's type 2, which is very important, we didn't talk about type 2 a lot, but really the number one factor beside genetic mm -hmm. is obesity. Right. Obesity can cause increase of the resistance to, to your own insulin. So changing the style of life, losing weight, exercise will definitely uh, make your body more sensitive to your own insulin and can prevent diabetes. Right. Uh, so definitely uh, watching what you eat, cutting down on carb, um, uh, exercise, weight loss, all these uh, measures help big time uh, for you to control your diabetes. Now, how to prevent, again, genetic, you, have not, you cannot because that's not in your hand, but you can always make it better by controlling it with a change of style of life. But if it's, if it's because of obesity, then... Obviously, weight loss. Right. I do have patients who really were obese, and I started them on uh, oral um, hypoglycemic mm -hmm. uh, medications, and they did lose a lot of weight, and eventually they were off the medications. Very good. Um, for diabetes, blood pressure, and cholesterol, for consultation, please stop by the clinic at Dr. Zarab Medical Center at uh, 7124 West 83rd Street, Suite C in Bridgeview, off of Harlem and 83rd, 708 599-9250. Uh, Dr. Uh, Osama, what kind of insurance companies does your office take? Uh, we take most of the insurances, uh, all, uh, of course, Medicare, commercial. Uh, Medicaid depends on if we are on their, uh, uh, my name is on their insurance or mm -hmm. not, but basically Aetna Health Part, uh, I think Health Partners are one of the very good Medicaid insurance that I promote uh, most people who have Medicaid, public yeah. aid, to switch on it, it's an excellent, uh, probably it's, it's the best uh, public aid uh, one. Great. So, but if somebody would like to come in for a consultation, he can just call your office or stop by for a possible co free consultation from Yahala? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Thank you. Well, the second topic we need to discuss is, is uh, high blood pressure. Uh, I know we spend a lot of time on, on diabetes, which is really such a huge. But if we touch a little bit on, on blood pressure, doctor, um, I'm sure everybody have blood pressure. But we talk about what is high blood pressure. Uh, high blood pressure is when you have what we call sustained elevation, means 
all the time the blood pressure is above certain level now the pre I'm sorry, uh, pre-hypertension is when it's between 130 to 139. Mm -hmm. uh, That's a top number, the systolic. Right, the okay. systolic. Now, the systolic, of course, uh, uh, 80 uh, okay. to 90. And now, um, above 139, this is, of course, in multiple multiple uh, setting, it should be, uh, th then this, this is hypertension. Now, you cannot just check your blood pressure one time and say, well, it's high. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, there is something called physiological elevation of blood pressure. In other words, under certain physical or emotional stress, blood pressure can go high, and that's right. normal, and then it should come down. Now, if it doesn't come down, it's if it's always high, that's called hypertension. But if it goes high sometimes, but most of the time it's normal, it's 125, 130, and if even less than 135, that's normal. So the, the idea is to go and get it checked the first time. Oh, it's high. Oh, I have high blood pressure. Here's medications. It's not the case. That's wrong. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, some some places they may do that, which is wrong. Uh, no, the patient should always uh, consult his phys physician and and, um, and seek the right advice. Okay. Now, for blood pressure, um, just like diabetes, you mentioned something about the, the, the going to the bathroom a lot, the drinking, I'm sorry, you know, thirst a lot and, and hunger. Now, how about high blood pressure patients? Well, most of your patients, what kind of symptoms they have that you might think about, oh, they may have a high blood pressure? You know, that's excellent question, Dr. Gura. I'm doing good today. No, no, you're very <laughs> good, as usual, really. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rashid. Uh, the, uh, here is the situation. Most of the time, people don't know they have high blood pressure. They don't. Well, sometimes they have headaches, mm -hmm. and uh, they come to the doctor, or they check it, or they have headaches all the time, and they come with high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the cases, they don't know they until they go to the doctor for, like, general checkup, and you check it, and you find their blood pressure, like, 160, 170. Uh, so it is a silent disease sometimes. And um, it caused a lot of damage. Um, some people, unfortunately, comes with the bleeding in the brain. Wow. Okay? And that's like a bleeding stroke. Yeah. And they don't know it. Some people come with heart attacks. Um, so, yeah, it can be a silent disease. Right. And this is why you, you, you are advised always to at least have one annual visit to your uh, physician to check your blood pressure. And if you do it yourself from time to time and you see it's always elevated above... 145, 150, you better check with your doctor. Right. Well, and this is what uh, you, I remember you mentioned something about that. You, you, your um, uh, medical assistant um, offering a free uh, checkup on high blood pressure. If you are no, in our area, yeah, please, if you are in the area of 83rd and Harlem, please stop by the office, uh, whether an appointment or not. We'll be more than happy to, to take your blood pressure. It will take like two minutes of your time, but it will definitely make a big difference. Um, so checking high blood pressure is such a, a big thing, Dr. Osama, and, and I like the idea how you said it. It's like a, a bomb. You don't know you have it or not. You, you just need to really check it out and, and be sure that you don't have that. And not from the first time. You know, you have to right. do it more right. than one time. So the complications of, of high blood pressure, you mentioned something about the stroke, but how about if there is, you know, blood pressure and diabetes on top of it? Okay, there are five risk factors for heart attack, for cardiovascular disease, for uh, basically. Uh, I will mention five of them. Mm -hmm. uh, one is diabetes mellitus. The second is hypertension. The third is high cholesterol. The fourth is genetic and the, or family, uh, uh, family history, a strong right. family history like your father mm -hmm. uh, or your mother or your Brother? Is, is mother-in-law involved? Mother-in-law <laughs> depends on how much she likes you. So. Okay. <laughs> so it's not 100% really. Okay. I'm just, right. just touching base. Yeah, that, that's a good question. <laughs> and the last thing is smoking. Okay. Now, don't tell me Argila is not included. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Ar Argila is, is included in smoking. Okay. Yeah. Now, we talk about prevention of diabetes. Now, how about prevention of, of high blood pressure? Um, okay. 90% of the cases, we call it essential mean unknown etiology, mm -hmm. and only 10% we know it's related to uh, certain uh, diseases or medications, etc. Right. Now, uh, the, the prevention, definitely a style of life helps. Like obese people,
can uh, develop diabetes, uh, can develop hypertension. I have a lot of people really, they watch their way, they lost weight, and their blood pressure become really normal. I mean, we have we had to stop medications because blood pressure became normal. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. The second thing is eating a lot of salt, especially if you have family history. Uh, that can elevate uh, your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have patients already have hypertension. When they, when they eat salt, they come with uh, heart failure or pro other problems. So, uh, the, again, change the style of life, healthy style of life. Uh, uh, try to lose weight. Uh, try to exercise. But let me tell you, sometimes you are very slim, very thin, and it's genetic. There is right. nothing you can do about it. So the only thing is to really... Uh, uh, seek medical advice, take medications, and don't take it, um, don't underestimate the effect of uh, uncontrolled hypertension. You can have stroke, you can have heart uh, condition, etc. cetera. So uh, certainly uh, take your medications if, uh, if it's genetic and you can okay. do nothing about it. Well, doc, uh, Dr. Osama, we are very close on time, but can we touch a little bit on cholesterol? Because we it, it came up in more than one time. Right. So wh what is cholesterol? What What's happened? You know, we all have cholesterol, normal and abnormal, triglycerides and, and everything, but w just a little synapses about cholesterol, please, due to time. Sure. Um, uh, quickly about cholesterol. Cholesterol is an animal fat. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, we, we, we make cholesterol by just getting exposed to the sun in the morning or at sunset, uh, our skin can make cholesterol. Cholesterol is uh, has two types. One is bad, one is good. The good, it prevents uh, uh, the uh, hardening of the arteries, while the bad get precipitated in the arteries and causes stroke, heart disease, and uh, other disease, other cardiovascular uh, diseases. Now, uh, the what to do about cholesterol? Mm -hmm. Well, cholesterol is rich, and when I say animal fat, I mean, don't let somebody tell you olive oil doesn't, of course it doesn't, it's a plant. Right. It's an animal. The richest is the yolk of the egg, which is safar al bayd, mm -hmm. and the second is cheese and milk, and of course, red meat. Right. You know, I think also, I'm not sure about it, is, is the shrimp. Shrimp, yes. It does have cholesterol, and all shellfish do have cholesterol, so you have also to be conservative when you about these things. Uh, so uh, certainly um, um, it is an animal, uh, uh, as we said, the source. They, um, and and um, you have to really watch it. And, of course, genetic also. Yes. And some people, very slim, they are vegetarian, um, uh, and they still can have a very high cholesterol. It depends on how their liver makes cholesterol so with cholesterol definitely we need to do a, a blood test but do you have to be fasting for that or yes yeah. absolutely blood uh, for cholesterol you have to be fasting 10 to 12 hours uh, at least well this show is sponsored by the bridgeview medical plaza if you have um, symptoms or, or any questions about high blood pressure diabetes weight loss urgent care auto and work injuries arthritis uh, dentistry work, any questions about medicine, and all your medical and dental needs, please stop by our office. We are at the Bridge Medical Plaza, 7124 West 83rd Street, off of 83rd and Harlem in Bridgeview, 708-599-9250. From Yahala Voice, Yulia Rehani, this is Dr. Rashida Bushenab, thanking Dr. Osama Zorob from the Zorob Medical Center. Uh, from uh, all of us at the uh, Yahala Voice, and uh, thanks to all our listeners for tuning in. Thank you, Yahala Voice, and thank you, Dr. Uh, Rashida Wishanab, for, for this opportunity. Thank, thank you. you.